So if your dog has been diagnosed with megesophagus and you're very upset, you're stressed out, maybe you're afraid your dog's going to die, I want to give you an update. Our dog has been diagnosed. Uh, how long, many months ago was this, honey? Three months ago. Three months ago with Maggie Sofkis. We were crying. We took him to the vet. We had $2,000 in dog vet bills. We thought our dog was going to die. This is Miko. He's a lapsa opso. He's eating. He's your good boy. What are you eating, a bone? He's got his food. We built him a mega esophagus chair. I'm going to tell you the whole story right now that there's hope. We were sitting on the floor holding our dog, bawling our eyes out, accepting the fact that our dog was literally going to die. We took him to uh, an emergency vet clinic and some special veterinarian diagnosed our dog with mega esophagus and said it's going to go down from here. He's going to get pneumonia. He's going to be on antibiotics again and again. He's 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 going to die. He's, he's completely off the antibiotics now. Yeah, you're about to cry right now. No, I'm not. Because bringing it up, it's really sad. So we're laying on the floor, holding our dog, sobbing and crying like our our literally like our baby is going to die because we don't have any kids yet. Yet we've been married for like six years and we don't have kids. But anyways, this is our baby right now. But look at him. You can build your own mega esophagus chair. You don't have to spend $250 on one, and I'll show you how right here. I don't, I'm not going to give you all the instructions, but do you see this? Like It's like the, the board that they use in a garage to hang all the hooks. You've seen this before, this perforated type of like compressed board, Home Depot. So I got a big sheet of the board, and I chopped it up in sections in the basement. I stayed up till like 4 o'clock in the morning, and I got like a huge bag of zip ties, and then I created a base. You see the base? It's like a square, okay? And then I created tall sides for it, and then I zip tied it all together and chopped it all with scissors, and then I created the back, the sides, and then I got these two things, you see those? Like a shelf. I cut a hole on the bottom so you could put a food bowl, but he doesn't really use it. And then I got um, uh, foam and blankets on the inside. And I put hinges. I just made hinges out of zip ties. The door opens and closes. And I just put a cheap little latch with uh, zip ties. You gotta get creative. But I literally, and then she thought it was ugly and it did look, it looked like some type of weird uh, execution chair. It looked abusive when he was eating in it. So we like zip tied a blanket around it and shit so it doesn't look so bad. But basically we got an egg timer here. And every time the dog eats, tick tock, tick tock. He has to sit in there for 15 minutes upright. And every time he drinks anything, he's got to sit in the chair for five minutes. So what we do is we keep all the food away from him. He can't have bones. He can't have treats anymore. It's really sad, but it's not. And he's used to it now. At first, he would freak out. He wanted out of the chair. The dog would have anxiety. He didn't like it. We were crying because we felt like we were abusing our dog, making him sit in this chair. Our family was upset because, you know, it, it's a sad thing because it's an entire lifestyle change. And you feel like your hands are cuffed to your dog now and, like, People will tell you, even people in your family, oh, you gotta put him to sleep. You gotta, like, fuck you, dude. I'm not fucking putting my dog to sleep. Oh, he's just a dog. He's not a human. You gotta put him to sleep. Fuck you. Like, what if someone said about your dog, right? So, we took that very serious and we made a full on commitment to take care of it. Look at him. He's sitting there. He's chilling. He likes it. He doesn't, he knows that it's chair time. He sits upright so the food can naturally, the gravity can pull it down. And at the end, what I do, will you hold this real quick for one second? I'm gonna point it down. Stay there. Okay, what I do, and again, I grab his paws like this, I lift him back, and I pat him cupping. It's called cupping. Oh, you good boy. Like that. And then it helps work the food down, and you'll hear him burp. You know, I'm not like a vet. Don't follow me. I'm not giving you any medical advice or anything like that. There's a Facebook group for Magosophagus. There's tons of study and research that you can do. If your dog is absolutely in a horrible condition and he can't keep any food down and he's regurgitating and, and uh, getting a aspirational pneumonia, what you can do is you can get the surgery and get the tube in the side of him, then grind up and feed him kibble and his medicine through a feeding tube. We did have him on antibiotics and antacids. Yeah. We took him off all that now, and he's really picky. It sucks. He'll only drink milk mixed with water. He won't drink water now. It's weird. It's mostly water, some milk. I'm telling you, he won't drink at all. So it's it's our last option, and he only eats mostly soft food. But sometimes he will get into that really good kibble. There's another thing that I want to show you over here. Oh, yeah, we keep a list. We fully 100% committed. 
And we didn't know, we were always like, honey, did you feed him? Did you feed him? Is he gonna eat? What's going on? I said, you know what? This notepad, we live and die by this notepad. If you're just tuning yeah, in, let me this write is an down update. What we just did. Yeah, so we write down, there's literally, I mean, this thing is packed, packed, look at this, with details and details. Every single time we let the dog out, we feed him, we give him water, we put him in the chair. So we put Miko log, June 17th, 2018, went outside potty. We got shorthand now, like, so potty, 8.08 a.m., eight, <laughs> uh, eight bowl of Caesar food, and... Chair, 15 minutes. A bowl of water. Milk water. Chair, 15 minutes. Okay? Every time he drinks water, Miko, uh, 12.32 p.m. And he can't uh, eat or drink late at night because he, he lays down and then he'll regurgitate at night. It's extremely dangerous if the dog regurgitates or, or because it'll go and back up into his, uh, his trachea and go into his lungs, and that's where the aspiration on pneumonia has. If the dog's peristalsis is, uh, effect is paralyzed and his esophagus doesn't work, then he can't keep the food down, so what happens is it'll go into his lungs, and then the smallest food particle will cause the pneumonia, which could kill him because the antibiotics, he's going to go on antibiotics, and then that it won't work, and then that's what actually takes the dog's life. So by him being in the upright chair, you know, I was logging every time he eats, my wife will ask me, she'll go, honey, when did Miko eat last? I go, I don't know, check the log, because I don't know. She looks, okay, he ate at 3 p.m., he's good for another two hours. So how many times a day are we feeding him or we're trying to feed him? Three or four. Three to four times a day. The dog lost weight. It was so skinny. We were scared. We could see his hips and his ribs showing. Like, we thought our dog was going to die. He got skinny, and now he is? Well, he's back to almost his normal weight. Yeah. He's a few pounds under, but... But he's a good boy. Yeah, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. You're almost done, buddy. You've got he's a couple a more boy. minutes. A couple more minutes, baby. He's a good boy. Now, you could hold him upright by hand, by his paws, until the liquid goes down. At night when he's sleeping, all of his saliva will gather, and it'll pool up inside of his esophagus, and then he'll pull out a big puddle of clear liquid so the first thing we do when we make up in the morning is we pick him up and we hold him and we hug him by hand and then we pat him on his back and if you listen very closely it's it's nasty you can hear it go down you can oh i can you can hear the saliva drain and go into his stomach all done. are you sure done so he knows all done. that he's done when the bell goes off like pavlov's dogs <laughs> pavlovian nlp training <laughs> And you can hear it go down, and if you don't do that, then he could puke it up and get aspirational pneumonia. So it's a big commitment to take care of the dog, but we love him, and we made a commitment that, and we've also seen on YouTube that your dog can live a normal life. So I know this was a very high-energy video. I was trying to get as much information out as possible. We have company that I have to get back to, but I had to make this video for you to let you know if your dog's been diagnosed with megasophagus and you're afraid you think he's going to die, have no fear. The... The mega esophagus expert superhero is here. Okay, later. And I'll put this in a playlist. Click the playlist link below or watch the next video to watch more mega esophagus dog videos. Goodbye. Bye.